think in today's environment, given the limited amount of capital, having a more capital efficient model is more attractive. Sid Patel, CEO of Cannabis Drinks Expo and Beverage Trade Network. We are live from Chicago here at the second annual Cannabis Drinks Expo. I have here Michael with me. He's one of the leading, you know, uh, founding partners of a leading firm which invests in cannabis. So we're going to talk a little bit about cannabis investment. What are the trends and where are, you know, what, what, what kind of uh, products are they looking to invest in? So Michael, thanks for joining me here. All right, sure thing. Super. Thank so uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your, you know, uh, your role and uh, just about your background, like, you know, how you ended up in cannabis. Sure. So yes, yeah, so I've been in cannabis for about the last 11 years. Um, and I saw this amazing opportunity and uh, first was advising entrepreneurs about how to found their business, mm -hmm. working with families about looking for investment, and ultimately established Salveo Capital, which we launched back in 2016. So we built up a portfolio of 21 companies across the entire cannabis ecosystem nice. across the country. And uh, we're continuing to be excited about the opportunity. Obviously, the cannabis world has changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, since, 2000, right. since 2016. Uh, what you're doing here is great with respect to beverages. I've been an investor in several companies that have beverage technologies as well as beverages. Mm -hmm. and, and I do believe beverages will be ultimately one of the largest categories mm -hmm. within the space as well. Great. I think we all in beverages are waiting for that long home run, right? When the whole federal thing is yep. done and then we can hopefully see products in Target and, and all that stuff. Right. So I think from you guys, it's really like the patience, right? And, yep. and uh, you know, uh, sort of working with entrepreneurs and make, giving them enough room yep. uh, and having those kind of conversations with them, right? So let me ask you, uh, do you still, are you still bullish? Uh, will you still pull out the checks the way you did uh, three years ago in cannabis or has it a little bit uh, dried up? And as you said, it's evolved. That also means that risk has gone down technically, right? Yeah, I mean, although, you know, the market has gotten larger and larger. We have more and more states that have legalized. Um, at the same time, there are more companies that are at a greater stage. And so what I would say is still investing money, still want to participate. Uh, for earlier stage companies that are just starting out, it's more difficult. I think mm -hmm. entrepreneurs need to understand this. Uh, it's a diff difficult macro environment. So my interest typically is making sure, you know, let's just talk about beverages, but we can talk about other categories. You know, one, you want to make sure there's been a product developed, there's a formulation. You need to know that there's a team that's well established and you've positioned your company for a certain segment of the market. Um, because there's, excuse me, there's different segments of the beverage market. Mm. You know, as you're seeing, there's seltzers, there, there are shop formats, there are cocktails or mocktails, mm -hmm. and each of them have a different set of the category. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of them can compete, but there's only room so, for so many. And uh, ultimately, like you said, legalization will make a change. Right now, it's difficult. Mm. A bottling line, if you have a large scale bottling line, is expensive. And the question is, which states allow you to produce a large enough amount for it to make economic sense? So I think you have to figure out of how, it, how does a company scale? How do they build their traction? And then how do they enter other states? And those are the things you would be asking a, a, an owner, right? right? Let's go right there. I think this will help you know, a lot of uh, brand owners. What are you looking for in their brand deck? You know, to, to yeah. save their time, to save your time, what exactly you would want to fo then focus on in, when they're pitching you? Yeah, well, I think, you know, packaging is critically important. I, I, think, I think you need to uh, separate yourself apart, have clear and concise packaging. Um, I, I also believe from a brand perspective, you, you need to be really specific and, and sort of bold in terms of who you're going after with your, your form factor or your product. Um, it, because th there's becoming a more and more crowded marketplace in terms of products. So you want it to be spot on, have the right messaging with your product, mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately provide extensibility. Like, so how do you build out? How is it? So you have a really focus to start with, but then how do you have brand extensions from that brand in the future? Got it. And, and, and you really want to have expertise in the house that have built up brands Like before. you say, like the product development team. Correct, and correct. And that, that is super important. Like you. You, you fo rather focus more on the product development than the sales team, for example? 
Well, you know, if you want to be economical, there's plenty of flavor houses of brand development folks. So, so if you can work with outside parties to do that, you're focused on the marketing and sales. That, that's a different model. And, and, I, and I, I could be interested in that as well. It's about, but it's more about the business model. How do you expect to go after? I think in today's environment, given the limited amount of capital, having a more capital efficient model is more attractive. So if you don't have to do the product development, if you don't have to invest in uh, bottling lines and you're only focused on the brands, that could be very interesting. It's more capital efficient. Just one last one. Yes. Uh, what are some good traits of the, uh, a good jockey? You know, where, where yeah. you just like, you know that that person is going to make it happen. So you need to have um, an amazing amount of optimism, uh, perseverance. There's going to be a lot of rocks and hurdles thrown in your way. Mm -hmm. So the ability to continue to innovate and change uh, is most critically important. And I think you got to be ready to accept failure. You know, failure is a way to sort of move and, and, and transition. So that, that's what I say is I think folks have to be invested, fully invested in their activity and then being able to be smart enough and humble enough to attract really quality people around them. Mm. Super.